everything I wear um, has a meaning, a purpose, a story. And that also kind of goes back to my art making. I'm a storyteller. When somebody will ask me what my medium is, I'll say, well, what do you do? Do you paint? Do you draw? Do you sculpt? Do you do what? And I said, I'm a storyteller. And the media, the art material, the clay, the performance, the painting, the sculpture, is all dictated by the story I want to tell. So yeah, yeah. So the jacket, the necklace, even my shoes, they all have a story. I'm Pam Kravitz. I'm an artist and art educator and kind of an art activist living in Cincinnati, Ohio. So I went to the University of Cincinnati and I went to DATH, which is Design, Art, Architecture, and Planning. Going to school there in art, I was also the Bearcat mascot. And I, so that means I was the, the person that dressed up and interacted with people. And you can kind of see that in my art and myself as well now. That's why when, I, when I'm talking about my journey as an artist, my journey as an artist and a human kind of are parallel. Like the person I became, I became my art. And I think being part of being a Bearcat mascot, love interacting with people. A lot of artists prefer to be in a studio quietly. I'm not that person. I guess you can kind of tell, right, by the outfit. But um, so that, that's kind of my journey. All right, now, I wasn't making any art after I graduated, and I wasn't happy. My friends noticed, and they said, why don't you go and learn about teaching about art? Like, go to the Contemporary Art Center and be a docent, a tour guide. So I did and totally fell in love with teaching, who knew, right? I went back later and got my teaching certification to teach um, high school through, um, elementary through high school art, and that's what I did for 30 years. And I've also been an artist within the Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky community. Why art? Hmm, why art? Man, that is the question I answered when I was little, it really was. I didn't know art was like a thing I could do though, but I knew it was the thing I gravitated to, I was good at, I was celebrated for. I didn't look like anybody else. I had these two beautiful sisters and beautiful mom and I kind of was the one that didn't fit in. I never fit in. And the art is what was my salvation and my savior really in, into appreciating me, loving me and being the person I am today. Art gave me um, it gave me the voice, it gave me the passion, it gave me the why for me, and um, I've never regretted it since. It's surely, it's a struggle, constantly. We as artists, we constantly struggle. We're like, what am I making? Why am I making this? Is it good enough? Is anyone gonna like it? Is anyone gonna come to my show? Is anyone gonna buy it? All of those questions we ask constantly in our head, but ultimately, when we're in the studio, when we're creating, it's the pure joy of making art and making a statement and telling your story through pictures and sculptures and um, why art, there was no other choice for me. The thing I wish I knew earlier was that I'm pretty great and I am good at things. And I might not be good at the things other people are good at, but I'm good at things. And um, I wish I kind of knew I was funny I didn't know I was funny. And somebody told me that when I was making my art, I was making um, really serious art. And they're like, why are you making serious art? You're funny, you're a storyteller. Um, so I, I wish that I would have embraced me earlier and um, celebrated me and honored me. And then the other thing is I wish that I realized that you could be funny and make art. I thought I had to be super serious and um, you know, change the world and I didn't realize I could just change my own world and in changing my own world through my art and through my humor, I could change the bigger world. You would look at me and think, um, I'm the life of the party, I'm the center of attention. Okay, yeah, mostly I am. I gotta admit, I do love that role. I have so much fun with it and I love using the arts to bring people together and me being uh, loud and vibrant and unique and all the things does that. But I love observing and observing is like looking and paying attention. Um, I love to be outside. That's something new for me. I honestly, I didn't know I liked the outdoors. I know, silly. 
but um, like I like hiking, I like camping, I like kayaking, I like to be outside and watch. I like to see movement, I love repetition. The repetition of the grass, the movement of the river, the, the way the clouds move in the sky. That's all observation. I also love to observe people. I do this thing where I'm, and I'm not judgmental. I promise I'm not judgmental, I'm more curious. Like I will sit um, on a park bench or I will sit having coffee outside, you know, at a cafe or, or a, um, you know, coffee house and just watch people. I'm fascinated by people, um, how they walk, what they do. I like to make stories in my head. Uh, I don't interact, I just kind of observe. And I love the tiny little minutia the things that everybody overlooks. That's what we as artists, we see those things. We see the individual blades of grass. We, we see the bricks or that crack in the sidewalk that's like, oh my gosh, that's like an amazing crack. I know, this sounds, okay, wait, am I selling silly? No, I don't mean to sound silly. I'm totally serious. Look at everything. I love observing. And that goes back into my work. Everything comes from the world around me and the stories I hear and the people I see um, in the movement, in the colors, that's, that's all part of observation. And that goes back into feeding my own art making practice. And maybe yours as well. Okay, here's the thing. You have to know that in your heart, um, you are doing the thing. You're doing the art. Stay true to your heart, but here's the hard part. You have to welcome criticism. You have to kind of embrace um, somebody trying to help you move forward with your art, which I think is really hard. It's hard for me. It's really hard for me, even at this juncture in my creating, um, creating art and being a you know a grown up and all the things. But criticism helps. It'll it'll make you better. But you have to kind of marry that, marry that with knowing that I'm true to my heart. But I'm going to take some criticism. I'm going to work to be better, um, and just persevere and do the work. Draw every day. Actually, I'm gonna take my own advice. I don't do that. I'm gonna start doing that today. Draw every single day. I don't care what it is. I was a ceramic major. Actually, my ceramics teacher in high school pretty much saved me from, um, I think I was, I, I know I was one of those kids that had I not found art or found my passion, um, I could have really struggled through my entire life because I, um, you know, I just kind of didn't have a direct direction. And you know how you find that person, I hope you find that person that just says, okay, you're amazing and I'm gonna help you be even more amazing. I'm gonna give you opportunity. And my ceramics teacher, Pam Hall in high school, she did that. So I spent a lot of time on the wheel. I spent a lot of time um, with clay. I thought I was gonna be a ceramic artist. And um, I found out later that I couldn't tell all the stories I wanted to tell, because remember, I'm a storyteller. Um, so I couldn't tell all the stories I want to tell with clay. I needed more. And I saw somebody was teaching a class. I show up at the class on the first day. Um, it's a quilting class. Fell in love with quilt making, but I don't know how to sew. I don't know how to traditionally sew. I know one stitch. I just call it the over under stitch. That's all I know how to use. And so the dude kind of sitting behind me, that big monkey, is a stuffed animal. I'm pretty sure I got, I don't know, like a Target or Kroger or something like that. And he's a big stuffed monkey. And then I went and embellished him and changed him and made him my own. So if you look super close, there's lots of story quilts on that monkey. And the monkey was part of a show that I called Not My Circus, Not My Monkeys. And I made clay bananas and I had the monkey sitting on a swing. Anyhow, that's not my circus, not my monkey, and that's kind of a really good example of using lots of the materials I like to use to create my art and to tell my stories. Art changes the world. It changes the world. It's the greatest equalizer. It's the thing every culture, ethnicity, um, race, time period have in common. It's the great equalizer. It's the great getter, the joy getter, the community getter, the activism get getter. I love that art is such a powerful communication tool and it has been since the beginning of humankind. And I like being part of that amazing community.